This 2011 accident at the Fukushima nuclear plant was one of the worst in history. Decommissioning the reactors is estimated to take 40 years. But the plant's operator is facing a serious problem securing enough workers for this. Some can no longer continue to work due to prolonged exposure to radiation. While others are leaving because of deteriorating working conditions. These days, one worker or another leaves the plant each day. A recent study by NHK has revealed that the plant operator had overestimated the number of workers available for the decommissioning. Some factors are uncertain, and in the long run, we may have some difficulty securing enough workers for the operation. Today, we'll see what's needed to guarantee a stable workforce in order to safely decommission the nuclear reactors. Welcome to today's close-up. I'm Hiroko Kuniya. Nuclear experts say it will take 40 years to remove all the spent fuel rods from the storage pools, take out fuel rods from three reactors in which a meltdown took place, and dismantle all the reactors, a task of unprecedented difficulty. About 3,000 people currently work at the plant each day. Some are being forced to leave because their accumulated amount of exposure to radiation has exceeded the legal limit. The operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, needs enough experienced workers until the end of the 40-year decommissioning process. But these days many are leaving, and this is causing anxiety. Will there be enough workers to complete the operation? Tokyo Electric, or TEPCO, has a legal responsibility to decommission the reactors. It is maintained that there is no shortage of workers and that there won't be for at least five more years. But an NHK investigation has shown that the number of workers TEPCO claimed to have secured was not quite credible. This is the contract system for the decommissioning. TEPCO hires 30 major companies on contract who then give the work to more than 300 subcontractors. An NHK crew interviewed workers from more than 50 contractors and subcontractors, as well as those from TEPCO, to find out about the working environment and why so many are leaving the plant. First, we'll look at the working conditions of those keeping the reactors in a state of cold shutdown. It's 6 a.m. Akira Shige is heading to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. For six years, he's been working there as a subcontractor, just south of his hometown of Namie. The morning commute is a two-hour drive. The slow traffic is normal. When I leave home a little late, the jam gets even worse. During the 20-kilometer journey, Shiga stops by at this facility to pick up protective clothing and a full-face mask. His job is to install lights at the plant. He says doing the job in full protective gear is extremely taxing. When we work at places with high radiation levels, we're sometimes required to run with our faces fully covered. It's impossible until you get used to it. In the summer, we need to rest every 30 or 60 minutes. Otherwise, we'd collapse. Shiga has seen nearly 10 of his colleagues leave the plant over the past six months. He and 
himself is undecided about his future. Are you going to stay? I don't know. Sometimes I feel I should just leave the plant and find work elsewhere. But then I start feeling sorry for my friends who are striving to rebuild our hometown. That's when I think I should hang on and work hard with them. I just can't decide. Why are workers leaving the plant? One reason is the persistently high radiation levels. A local contractor let us see the situation for ourselves. The contractor installs equipment at the plant to decontaminate radioactive water. One worker returns to the office after a day's work. Your level of exposure? 0 0.02 millisieverts. The contractor keeps track of the exposure levels of all its workers. On average, workers at the plant are being exposed to nearly 10 times more radiation than at other plants. The government limits workers' exposure to 50 millisieverts per year, or 100 millisieverts in five years. Those who breach this limit can no longer work at nuclear plants. The contractor had no choice but to ask two employees approaching the limit to leave the plant. The exposure levels of the remaining 18 workers are also rising each day. It's like walking on a tightrope every day. Many workers quit or ask to be transferred to another job. It probably can't be helped. I understand, but it's hard to keep things going. Another reason behind the exodus of workers is the decline in working conditions. This man in his 40s from Western Japan has been working for a subcontractor at the plant since fall last year. Initially, he earned just over $3,100 in monthly take-home pay for putting in five days a week, but this amount was slashed to about $2,500. This past August, the man's employer asked him to leave a hotel that had been offered as accommodation and to pay for all his living expenses. It's harsh because the work I do is abnormal. The plant remains stable only because people like me are giving themselves up for the job. Asking them to accept poor working conditions and driving them into a corner isn't fair at all. The man and ten of his colleagues quit in September, feeling that they no longer deserve the high risk of radiation exposure with the cuts in pay and perks. What's behind the decline in working conditions? We surveyed 28 firms that contracted work from TEPCO and received a response from 15. Results showed that the price per contract for decommissioning and other work was going down.
Of the 10 firms that said prices were declining, eight said that one reason was increased competitive bidding by Tepco to save money. Stiffer competition led to smaller winning prices, which in turn dealt a blow to workers' wages. The effects are felt among subcontractors too. This firm had been undertaking work at the plant since the time of its construction. It says unit prices per contract began falling by about 30% early this year. We've been involved in the plant since its birth and hope to remain so until its very end. But if things remain as they are, the company's future is doomed. Other local contractors probably all face a similar predicament. There are also growing concerns that the number of workers with the necessary expertise to handle decommissioning could run out. This company that manages and maintains nuclear plant instruments hasn't been able to recruit a single worker for the plant since the accident. If nothing changes, there will be no young workers at the plant in future. I think that's very clear. Funding for contracts must be balanced with the need to secure manpower. Without such thinking, the future is bleak. Joining us is our reporter, Yuzo Notsuhara, who has been covering the story. We saw that many workers are leaving the Fukushima Daiichi plant. How high is the turnover? More than 20,000 people have worked at the plants since last year's accident, but the turnover number is not available. Studying the plant 20 months after the accident, however, I think that number is pretty high. Many workers in areas with high radiation levels are quitting. They have to leave in around three months when their level of exposure is almost at the safety limit. Recently, deteriorating working conditions are also making others leave. At a local job placement office, many jobs at the plant are offered at around $125 a day or $2,500 a month. One worker in the report said the plant is under control thanks to his and his colleagues' efforts. He said it is hard to feel motivated in such a risky environment while working conditions are deteriorating. Does he represent the voice of workers there? Most workers at the plant come from Fukushima Prefecture and take pride in protecting their communities by working there. But after months of grueling work, they are running out of reasons to stay. Workers in decontamination jobs will receive a daily government allowance of $125 on top of their wages. In some cases, total payments are higher for decontamination workers than those working in a radioactive environment. Can TEPCO get the necessary manpower for decommissioning? TEPCO has maintained that it can and says this is supported by the number of workers who have registered to work at the plant. It says that number is far above the manpower needed for the time being. But our investigation has proven otherwise. Now let's see how TEPCO views the prospect of securing enough workers. In July, TEPCO revealed an outlook on the reactor's decommissioning process. The number of registered workers is more than we need. A TEPCO spokesman said while they need 11,700 workers this year, 24,300 are registered to work at the Fukushima Daiichi plant. 
The spokesman said there is no shortage of workers. However, the amount of work that needs to be done at the plant is increasing steadily. This major construction company is one of the contractors getting rid of debris. And TEPCO has given it another job. The construction of gigantic tanks to store contaminated water. Contaminated water is accumulating on the underground floors of buildings that house the reactors. It must be pumped out and stored elsewhere. We sometimes had to work around the clock to meet the deadline. We had to gather workers from all the branches and make them work by rotation to complete the mission on time. A total of 900 tanks have been set up to store contaminated water. But more are likely to be needed soon, and that will require more workers. How many people work at the plant each day? Using papers provided by TEPCO, we indicated where the workers were on a particular day in September. This can be seen by the yellow figures, which show that workers are operating all over the plant compound, including where contaminated water is stored. According to the layout, TEPCO needs 3,000 workers each day. The utility recalculated the number of workers needed in a year, taking into account the increased amount of work and people leaving due to radiation exposure. The figure came to 18,000. This is about 6,000 more than the 11,700, the figure previously cited by TEPCO. Looking further into the matter, we found something surprising. TEPCO claimed to have secured 24,000 workers, but this was actually the total number of people who had worked at the plant in the last 19 months since the accident. Of the above figure, 16,000 had entered their registration, with only 8,000 still registered as of October. While the amount of work is increasing, we now know that the number of workers the utility claims to have secured is less than initially announced. We asked TEPCO whether they really do have enough workers. Some factors are uncertain. Many people work at more than one place. They leave the site, go elsewhere, and then return to register. I suppose the total number is not very different from what we had announced. TEPCO maintains there's no problem for now because they only need 3,000 workers a day and already have 8,000. But it admitted there could be a problem in the long run. Don't you feel anxious because more workers are needed than initially thought? In the long run, we may have some difficulty securing enough workers for the operation. So we must put a lot of effort into securing and educating workers. The Agency for Natural Resources and Energy supervises the decommissioning. We asked how the government was planning to secure the necessary manpower for the estimated 40-year process of dismantling the reactors. We'll look at what's happening. If there are problems that need improving, we'll acknowledge them as problems. 
People may say it's too late, but we believe that the first step is to listen carefully to the voices of those on the front lines. Today's guest is Chuo University Law School Professor Junji Annen, who knows TEPCO and its management well. Securing enough manpower is a critical part of decommissioning the plant. But we have seen that TEPCO is yet to have a good grip on the exact number of available workers. How difficult is it to get that number? It can be difficult because the number of registered workers changes over time. Furthermore, regions hit by last year's disaster tend to be shorthanded because of a post-disaster jump in labor demand. To know the number of available workers, TEPCO's head office and the plant need good communication. I suspect the utilities head office does not fully understand the work environment at the plant. TEPCO's admission that it is concerned whether it can continue to provide adequate manpower is a step in the right direction. TEPCO is also concerned whether it can boost employee retention so workers' skills stay within the company. Yet, as we saw in the report, young people are shunning the nuclear plant. This is serious, isn't it? Indeed. Decommissioning the plant alone is said to take 40 years. In future, Japan will have more aging reactors to take offline. Power companies will face the same need for engineers and workers. Considering this future prospect, the lack of young workers is a serious problem. The knowledge and experiences of those at the Fukushima plant must be precious. Yes, as precious as a national treasure. What must be done to maintain workers, their skills and experiences over the long term? That's a tough question. We must not forget that the plant is being kept in a state of cold shutdown thanks to the efforts of its workers. We should pay respect to and thank them for their efforts. Other than that, what's needed most is money. Wages must be kept above a certain level. Workers approaching their radiation exposure limit should be able to find a job after leaving the plant. Their health should be checked every five to ten years. Health care should be provided. All these services cost money. To cover increasing costs, TEPCO raised electricity charges on September 1st. In return, the utility is required to cut costs deeper and streamline its management. But in doing so, it put more projects on a competitive bidding. Drops in contract prices eventually caused a strain on workers' wages. With another rate hike looking to be harder to sell, how can TEPCO manage to cover rising costs? That's another difficult question. Given that the company needs money, it has two options, to raise electricity bills or get an injection of public funds. TEPCO raised electricity charges only recently. It is paying for the decontamination, decommissioning and compensation to those affected by the disaster. It cannot keep paying all of these. The government will have to step in. Nuclear power was introduced as a national policy and has benefited us all. We should shoulder the cost of cleaning it. Not just TEPCO. No, because it cannot. If the taxpayers' money is to be used, TEPCO will be asked more pointedly whether it has done everything to cut costs, won't it? There will be fresh calls for TEPCO to streamline. It still has idle assets and subsidiaries to sell. It can also negotiate with its contractors to reduce repair and other costs.
外部からの,その調達というものを削減する努力も必要です。What's more, it should consider ways to purchase cheaper fuels, which make up the largest proportion of its costs. I guess the government's stance on the matter will also be called into question if it is to step in. This is a national issue. The government should present a clear vision of its nuclear policy and explain where the plant's decommissioning fits in. We cannot wait any longer. I see. So discussions should start now. Thank you very much for joining us. Professor Annen gave us his insight into workers leaving the Fukushima nuclear plant.